Hi, it's Ramsey Dewey with the JX Fight Club in Shanghai, China. I'm going to show you 11 rounds of sparring, kickboxing sparring, K1 rules with my friend Jawad Mahmoudi. He is the head striking coach at Absolute MMA, also here in Shanghai, China. This is the second time we sparred together. We filmed this about maybe five, six months ago. So Jawad is a professional fighter. He has been training his whole life. His father is a coach of world champions. His little brother is currently fighting in 1FC. And he just knocked me off balance going really, really light there. So after this sparring session, we did a podcast, and you can check that, that out here on this channel. I'll put a link. And after the sparring, Jawad pulled out some notebooks, and this was really interesting. He has reams of notebooks, all about notes on sparring. And the way he catalogs the information that he gleans from sparring. It is like musical notation. This guy is an absolute puzzle to figure out. Again, this is the second time we sparred. The first time was about a week previously. We did about 12 rounds and this day we did 11 rounds due to time restrictions. And I thought I'd figured out his patterns after the first sparring session, but he adapts. He, he adapts, he learns. And that's one thing I pride myself on, is, is adapting and learning and figuring out how my opponents move, how my training partners move, getting used to them. And Jawad does the same thing to a very, very high degree. And I've got to say this, I went my whole professional fighting career in multiple combat sports, American kickboxing, Muay Thai, Sanda, K1 kickboxing, MMA, without ever being kicked in the head. And it rarely happens in sparring. And during these 11 rounds, and in the previous sparring session we had, Jawad landed so many head kicks. Fortunately, with a superb level of control, as you see right there. So as we talked about in our podcast, and I've made a ton of videos about this, sparring should be controlled, and you should be learning something. As Jawad said in the podcast, sparring is about sharing. It's about sharing information, sharing what you learn, sharing how to be a better fighter. So let's uh, look at some of the technique here. One thing Jawad does I don't see a lot in many other fighters is balancing on one leg. Not so much in the traditional Muay Thai stance where you see the fighters are heavier on the back leg and lighter on the front leg, but he will balance on one leg and he will fake and he will feint with his lead knee repeatedly and you don't know if that is just a motion, or if he is going to throw a teep, or if he's going to throw a kick, because they all start exactly the same way. I'll do something very similar by raising my lead hand because it looks very much like a jab, or a hook, or any other type of punch to the uninitiated, uninitiated or when you begin a strike. Even though raising your hand looks very different than a strike, if you watch those two motions from the outside in the middle of the fight, raising the hand, just like raising the knee, looks very much like initiating the actions of a punch. So, again, I'm extremely grateful that we are able to spar at this level of control because I learned a lot from the sparring session. There were multiple opportunities that uh, Jawad had to sweep where he did not, and I had a couple of those. We sort of had this gentlemanly agreement, no sweeps, no takedowns. 
is another one of those beautiful head kicks at close range. And, and one thing Jawad does so well is throwing head kicks from close range. That range where generally I will start to pummel for a clinch and I'm not expecting a head kick, but surprise, there he comes. And you can see Jawad is enjoying himself. He's got a smile on his face. He, re he reminds me a lot of... Uh, of one of my Thai coaches, Chan and Sin Sub, in that regard. The guy just loved sparring, and he loved fighting, and he would smile when he fought. Not one of those stupid, I'm, I'm not really hurt, you don't really phase me type of smiles, but a, a smile that shows I genuinely love doing this. Again, one of those high, close, clinch range head kicks. And that's the end of the round. Here we go again. I'm trying to change up my patterns a little bit. Be a little more unpredictable. <laughs> I just took three left kicks to the guts. Jawad is, is very good at leading with the left leg. I tend to be a little reluctant to lead with a, a middle kick especially fighting here in China because so many of these Sunda fighters are exceptionally good at catching body kicks. So you will want to set those body kicks up, but Joao does an excellent job of leading with a body kick that is, is very difficult to catch because of his fakes and his feints. And they're very subtle. So if you don't understand fakes and feints, you're probably not seeing them. But it's very much about that, that motion of raising the leg. Now you might think, if you raise a leg, you're, you're off balanced, and generally, yeah, you are. But Jawad is absolutely rock solid up on that one leg. And it's, it's a weird feeling because it's, it's not what it looks like. It looks like you could just put a little pressure on somebody when they're up like that and push them over, bulldoze them, but no. So again, I picked his brain a little bit about how he was able to do that. And he showed me a few of his training drills, which are very similar to um, what Bill Superfoot Wallace taught. If you're not familiar with Bill Superfoot Wallace, he was a, uh, a famous American kickboxer back in the day, a kickboxing champion. Basically, he will stand up on one leg and practice repeatedly various motions, driving the hip forward and back, hip forward and back, uh, various kicks up on one leg, and just get really, really solid in those positions. Jawad's really good at catching those teeps and those leg kick combinations. There's so much going on here, it's, it's hard to uh, describe exactly other than I'm getting my butt kicked a little bit here. So it's, it's interesting to see a situation like this where you have a, a generalist versus a specialist. So I'm a mixed martial arts coach, Jawad is a striking coach specifically. The striking coach is getting the better of the striking match at this moment. On to the next round. I like those illusion kicks. And Jawad has a very interesting repertoire of kicks. He likes those illusion kicks as well. He, he does some crazy stuff sometimes, like capoeira kicks and karate kicks and video game techniques. I think he does a... Street Fighter Shoryuken at one point, that Rising Dragon Punch, and unfortunately we go off screen for a moment. But every movement has a plan behind it. Every movement has a rhyme and a reason to it. There's no guesswork here with him. And that's part of the reason I feel like I'm at a disadvantage here because I'm still in this guessing phase, like trying, trying to figure him out. A spinning arc kick to the head there. And I try to mimic it, but he 
stuffs my kick by moving in and then comes in with that 360 kick right there. And again, those beautiful high kicks from clinching range, toe to toe. Great flexibility, superb control on this guy. So this is a, a film that I've studied quite a bit since five or six months ago when we filmed this because I learned so much from it. There are three types of training partners you need. Those guys you can squish and play with, the guys at your same level, and the guys who can toy with you. And they will all have something extremely important to teach you. Jawad has a little bit of reach, a little bit of height, and he's a little bit heavier than I am, and it's not too often I get that combination in a sparring partner, especially over here in Shanghai. I tend to be on the taller end of human beings in this part of the world. I like to follow up a round kick to the leg with a, a teep, another one of those head kicks. Nice combination there again, follow, ending with a head kick. I used to throw a lot more head kicks than I do now. Maybe it's one of those things I gotta get back into, we'll see. Changing my stance and my distance a bit. And Jawad is adapting to every change I throw at him. And again, that head kick from that toe to toe range. It's one of those positions that a lot of kickboxers will move into when they feel they're being overwhelmed a little bit because it's harder to kick and get kicked and, uh, easier to clinch up and tie up and control your opponent for most fighters. People do not expect to get head kicked from there. But, you know, coming from a Taekwondo background myself, that is something you do see in Olympic-style Taekwondo. Getting in very close, but without clinching, so you can throw head kicks. But uh, generally, head kicks from that range are touch, like just to score points. But Jawad is able to generate power from that distance. And again, perfect timing. So even with light contact, he's able to unbalance me so, so very well. Trying to use my side kick a little bit more get a little bit of extra reach. It's not a huge reach difference, but when you understand your reach perfectly, every, every little bit counts. And Jawad understands his reach perfectly. So Jawad trained in Thailand and various other parts of the world, but again, his style is notably different than what you would see from a, a Thai fighter. It's, it's much more versatile, I would say. Much more dynamic. It's interesting, every time I feel like I get a good hit in on him, immediately he throws two more right back at me. And that's, that's a good mindset. You know, you get hit once, you throw two back. <laughs> that was a goofy spinning thing I did right there. But... In sparring, you have to be willing to make mistakes, because that's how we learn. So, in our podcast, we showed three or four rounds of the sparring, and got some commentary from both of us, and I'm going to show you all 11 of them today. I got a bunch of questions about um, why I am not showing more sparring videos and stuff from the JX Fight Club because a lot of people missed out on 
the notifications. There's Jawad doing a handstand mid-round right there. Uh, the JX Fight Club has been temporarily closed for construction for the last few months, and we will reopen on May 5th. So, yeah, they did a bunch of structural renovations. They tore out the HVAC system, put in a new one, tore out the, the ceiling, put in a new one, a lot of electrical work, uh, tore out the floors, put in new floors, that, that kind of thing, all throughout the entire building. So, yeah, we'll be back May 15th. For all of you inquiring minds who want to train with us here in Shanghai, China, at the JX Fight Club. All right, back to the round. A hook and a high kick. And Jawad shows the sweep, but doesn't complete it. But it's there. It's right there. He knows the sweeps very, very well. But in the interest of time and to focus on the stand-up game, yeah, we're focusing on that stand-up game. Now, most of my training partners, I can outreach them with my jab and play around with people a little bit with my, with my jab, but I am not able to do that with Juwad at all. So I'm trying to figure out some alternative strategies here. And I'm sure there are plenty of you in the comments saying, if you do this and if you do that, you can land this kick or that punch or whatever. And yeah, let me know. Let me know what you think. How would you uh, spar with an opponent like this? Another one of those head kicks. Got to know when to bring your guard up with a guy like this he fakes the kick I go to catch it and as I'm reaching to catch the kick he throws the teep and in the time it took me to say that he already already landed five more kicks and a knee and a kick I'm trying that back kick but he's just out of range because, again, you want to throw the back kicks as your opponent is moving forward. Now, I tried several times before this to move into a clinch, but Jawad is... It's like trying to catch a fish out of the water, trying to clinch with this guy if he doesn't want you to. So I figured, well, maybe, maybe his clinch work isn't that great, but as soon as I clinched up with him, I realized, yeah, he knows how to clinch fight. This guy is definitely trained in Thailand with some very good TIE fighters. He knows his clinch work. Oh, that was, that was his, uh, him attempting that um, Street Fighter V style Shoryuken Dragon Punch. It's a video game move. Bit of a slip there on the mat, otherwise it would have been amazing. Trying that double low high round kick and he just teeps me. I learned a lot about where my balance needs to be from this sparring match. And since sparring with Juwad, I've changed, or I should say added, a lot of balancing work to my training, which has paid off quite a bit. It's made my kicking a lot better, made me feel a lot more solid on my feet. It's interesting how sometimes you can land a kick on someone and you feel like you're solidly grounded into the floor and you end up being the one getting knocked back because they understand balance just a little bit better than you do. So that happened to me several times during this, this sparring match. So it's super important to ask yourself questions. When you review footage like this, ask yourself, why is this working? Why is this not working? Bit of clinch action going on here and watch how he sets up this knee right here. Just nice and slow, but just showing me, yeah, your head's right, it's open right there. For both the knee and a round kick. 
He's just touching me in the liver with his left shovel hook. Saying, hey, you're open right there. I do I pulled that kick? He's trying one of those uh, rolling thunder kicks, but yeah, those you can't really throw in slow motion, so he essentially had to compromise his balance to show me the opening for the kick. And that's a lot of what light contact sparring is, showing the move, like I'm showing that there is a golf swing takedown right there, but not completing it. There's a time and a place for hard sparring, and this isn't it. If you're, if you're going to do 11 rounds in a row, yeah, you're not going to do hard, heavy sparring in that situation, especially with a guy who can snipe you with head kicks. Man, if this was a hard sparring match, we wouldn't have got past the first round. <laughs> Trying to amp up the speed a, a little bit. But what's really interesting about, about Jawad is his position, because you see he's, he's not going fast, and he's not going hard, and he's not relying on speed, and... He did leave himself a little unbalanced with that illusion kick right there, and that may have been a speed issue, because you can throw those kicks fast. But for the most part, he's not relying on speed, and he's not relying on, uh, on power, but he's still managing to land the strikes that he wants and uh, unbalance when he wants to unbalance. And like the late, great Jack Dempsey said, it's not a setup unless your opponent is unbalanced. And that's true in every combat sport. It is true in striking, it is true in grappling, it is true in clinch fighting. A setup is not a move you do before the real move. It is something that unbalances your opponent. Uh, judo players understand this very well. With the uh, principle of Kazushi unbalancing your opponent before you throw them. It's not enough to know the, the, you know where to put your hands and feet and how to how to turn and how to drop and elevate your hip or whatever is required to complete the technique. You have to unbalance your opponent first. You must get them moving in a certain direction first before you can successfully throw them. Another one of those, those beautiful high kicks right there. And it's the same thing with kickboxing. You've got to get your opponent moving in a very specific direction. Like I mentioned with a, a back kick, really any linear kick. If you want to do damage, you have to get your opponent move, moving toward you. It's the same principle we learn from a speed bag or a double in bag or any of those moving bags. The time to hit it is when it moves toward you. Because it's like a a car crash from two cars going right toward each other for maximum damage. Whereas if you try to hit somebody moving away, well, we either miss or just push them further away from us with no damage or very little damage happening. So if we can set our opponent up with something so simple as just getting them to take a step toward us, that is a setup in and of itself. We can unbalance our opponent in that way. I feel like I've got a million different things flying at me in this round here. You ever play one of those old video games where it's like a shoot 'em up and you got like 50 different objects on the screen all flying toward your character trying to kill you at the same time? <laughs> Yeah, when, when Jawad turns up the heat, that's, that's kind of how it feels. I'm trying to work my sidekick again, because that is the longest range weapon. And when you have a guy who can outreach your jab, the sidekick can become your new jab. That's a principle you'll see a lot in Chinese Sanda. With Sanda fighters here in China, the sidekick 
often becomes the surrogate for the jab. It, it sets up combinations, it finishes combinations. You can set up an entry to a clinch or a throw with a sidekick, you can set up punches with a sidekick, you can establish distance with a sidekick, create distance, um, remove distance with a sidekick, when you understand that technique. Trying to do a little bit of hand fighting, but as I'm doing that, I'm just eating teeps to the midsection. I get one right hand off to the jaw, and Jawad responds with three counter strikes. And again, one of those kicks that doesn't look like a head kick from a first person perspective until it does. There's really no safe place to stand. Sometimes, sometimes you'll spar with a guy and figure him out and realize, okay, I can stand here, I can move here, or use this pattern and, and consistently beat him. But when you have a guy who is dynamic and adaptable, yeah, there's never a safe place in the ring. The ring is not a safe place, and the sooner you learn that, the better. As I often say, the big difference between combat sports and self-defense is the arena. In a combat sport, you are fenced in. You're stuck in a, you're stuck in a ring or you're literally locked in a cage. There is nowhere to run. So you're forced to become the aggressor. It's not a safe place. It is a place of aggression, a place of combat a place of action and violence. Whereas in a self-defense situation, the objective is remove yourself from the violence. And that's it. Back again for another round. Throw a round kicks at the same time. I think his landed first. So sometimes speed matters. A little too close for that turning back kick there. The understanding distance is so crucial on all strikes, especially that turning back kick. It's one of those beautiful, highly effective moves that is. Uh, it often just goes wrong just because of simple things like angle and distance. So I find myself this round mimicking what Jawad was doing in the earlier rounds by leading with my left body kick. Just trying that on for size. Jawad uses the double fist high low simultaneous punch followed by the high head kick it looks kind of goofy but it's a shockingly effective technique when done correctly similar to something everybody used to do back when i was competing in taekwondo except it was a two-fisted punch one high one low one to the uh the upper part of the upper body and one to the lower part of the lower body since you're not allowed to punch the, the face, but then followed with a head kick. I don't know if people are still doing that, but um, yeah, there was an interesting reminder to see Jawad do that in a, a kickboxing match, especially for a guy who um, for whom the bulk of his training is, uh, is Muay Thai. But you can see he's, he's well-versed in all kinds of styles of striking. Karate, Taekwondo, Muay Thai, Sanda. He just absorbs whatever he sees from whoever he spars with, learns from them, adapts, takes what's useful. Had a bit of a conversation about that, that idea that uh, was popularized by Bruce Lee, take what's useful, disregard what's not. 
And this guy basically said, if it wasn't for Bruce Lee, nobody would have ever done that. And I don't believe that. Bruce Lee was awesome, but... You know... Smart people figure it out eventually. And there's the end of the round. Gunchawad is super respectful. It's it's a weird thing just being a trained killer who's super respectful. I'm gonna kill you, but I'm gonna be nice about it. <laughs> spinning kick action and it's it, it's weird again he's he's working into this range where where I don't feel like I have the space to kick and he's got longer legs and he's still kicking in that range so it's it's very much a, a matter of angles a lot of times if you feel you don't have the space for something or you don't have the reach for something, it's it's not a matter of how long your legs are, it's the angles. And again, this is true in striking and grappling. I see this a lot when teaching the triangle choke to new students. They'll often say, my legs aren't long enough to do a triangle choke. And they absolutely are, it's just they need to change their angle in order to to get their legs in the correct position. Angles are everything in fighting. Especially the spinning attacks. And if you want to be good at landing spinning attacks, spinning back fists, spinning hook kicks, spinning anything, set it up, create an angle, get into your opponent's peripherals as you are throwing that strike. A bit of clinch work right here. Again, I'm trying to be very wary of, of the head kicks right here because I understand at this point he can throw head kicks from inside the clinch. He's checking my kicks, every last one of them. I'm finishing that combination with another head kick. So many head kicks. I've switched my stance to a southpaw. Back to orthodox. Just trying to vary my footwork a little bit. And Jawad keeps steadily moving forward. Steadily fainting and faking those kicks by raising the knee high. Catches my kick, I rotate out. I've used a lot of different strategies for escaping when somebody catches a kick. I find one of the best is to rotate as if you're throwing a roundhouse kick. Just violently rotate until you get out. All right, there's the end of the sparring. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments down below. Now get out there and train.